1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire them. Say what? Is that Batman? This is meant to be Mr. Moe's show. Seriously, get out of here. Good afternoon, evening, morning. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is or where you're watching me from because this here is all about you learning mathematics when it suits you best. That's right, you could be watching me from your own house. You could be watching me from a mate's house. You could even be at a restaurant that gives you free Wi-Fi when you buy a meal. By the way, if you are there, could I please have a large cheeseburger meal um, with a chocolate sundae? Just bring it along, give it to me in class. We don't have to say anything. All right, so we've got plenty to get through today. Um, we're going to be going through motion graphs, so how about we get stuck straight into it? Let's go. Okay, so here we have Jerry wearing a tux, and over the next couple of minutes, we're going to discuss his displacement as in position, his velocity, and his acceleration. Now his displacement is how far away he is from his starting point at any given time. As I move him to the right, his displacement or his position is positive. Right, now moving him back towards the left, as soon as he passes zero, his displacement or position is negative. And let's make Jerry run into the wall. Okay, so looking at velocity now, I'm going to make his velocity positive, noting that by doing so, what I'm going to actually do is force him to move to the right-hand side of the screen because he's moving in the positive direction, right? And he's moving at a constant speed because the velocity is constant. Ugh. Now I'm going to make his velocity negative, and once again, noting that he's moving in a constant speed in the negative direction. I'm going to speed up his velocity now. Ugh. This is seriously so much fun. Right, making him move really fast, right? So the greater the velocity, the faster he moves. Looking at acceleration now, what happens is he starts off slow, moving towards the negative direction, but he's moving faster and faster and faster. So what acceleration is, is a change in speed. Tom, seriously, quit it. Towards the right, he's moving at a constant acceleration, but his velocity is increasing because acceleration is a change in speed. It's okay, Jerry, that's the last time, I promise. Mr. Moore Productions would like to inform you that there were no Jerry's hurt during the making of this film. Alright, so there's a couple of things we want to get across today. The first being that is if you find the gradient of a position time graph, what you actually find is the velocity. That is, the gradient of this function here will end up giving you the answer for velocity. Because velocity is a change in distance over change in time. That is, in order to get from one place to another, you need to have a speed of some sort, whether it be slow, fast or whatever. The next thing that we want to get across today is that the gradient of a velocity time graph is actually equal to acceleration. That is, if you find the gradient of the velocity time graph, what you'll actually find is the acceleration. Because velocity is a change in speed over a change in time. Think about it. If you are increasing your speed, you are accelerating. Okay, so summing up, if we find the gradient of a position time graph, what you actually find is the velocity. Right? And if we find the gradient of a velocity time graph, what you actually find is the acceleration. Alright, so let's just watch Jerry do his thing for a bit. Now, as you can see, there's three graphs going on. The top graph is a graph of his position over time, or his displacement over time. That is, how far away he is from the zero mark on the line. The middle graph is a graph of his velocity, that is, how fast he is travelling at any given time. So you can see here that you've got positive and negative values depending on which direction he's heading. And the bottom graph tells us that his acceleration over time, that is, if he is speeding up or slowing down at any given time. Basically, if you find the gradient of the position time graph, you find the velocity. So this value here is the gradient of the line above it. And if we find the gradient of the velocity time graph, we get the acceleration. Note that at this point the velocity graph is flat, therefore the gradient is zero and the acceleration is zero. Note that Motion Man stopped for a couple of seconds at a displacement of negative 10 metres. And of course because he's stopped he has no velocity because he's standing still. Therefore the gradient of the position time graph is flat, giving us a value of zero. And this is shown on the velocity time graph where the velocity is zero. 
And of course, in order to stop, he had to change his speed. Therefore, the acceleration has a quick little spike that can be seen here. Therefore, the gradient of this little section is equal to this value here. In this section, the motion man is moving in the positive direction. Therefore, the gradient of the position time graph is positive. Now, if we actually found this gradient, we get a value of positive 5. That can be seen here on the velocity time graph. Note that the position time graph has the same steepness or slope the whole way through. Therefore, the velocity is the same the whole way through. And during this section, because we're not speeding up or slowing down, the acceleration is zero. This can be seen because the gradient of the velocity time graph is flat, therefore zero, making acceleration zero. Note that the only time when we have any changes in acceleration is where we go from standing still to moving, and then when we quickly come to a stop. Note that for this section here, the slope or the gradient is becoming steeper in the negative direction. That is, if we find the gradient at any given point, it is becoming steeper and steeper. This results in our velocity becoming more and more negative. Note that the gradient of the velocity time graph is no longer zero and is in fact negative. Therefore, you can see that we actually have negative acceleration. For the final section, the gradient is becoming steeper and steeper and is going up because he is moving in the positive direction. Because the gradient is becoming steeper and steeper and more positive, the velocity is actually increasing. And this little section here is being cut off because he's going that fast that we can't actually see it in the screen. And of course, because the velocity time graph has a gradient other than zero, we actually have acceleration. All right, so we've still got plenty to get through. Um, so let's have a look at an order of events that happened to me whilst I was at Eastland on the weekend. For the next minute, we're going to watch two idiots in onesies riding an elevator. It's important that you're not focusing on what the idiots are talking about, but instead watch the animation of the elevator on the right and check out the graph that's modelling the elevator's height as it goes up and down. I'm just going to put my hoodie on because it looks cool. Hey Jerry, do you mind pressing the button and turning the elevator music on? Sure. Ah, that's better. Hey Tom. Yeah Jerry. Just a hypothetical for you. My monkey ears are listening. If you had a pet dragon, would you teach it to toast your toast for you? <laughs> I would, but I'd make sure it was named Damon first. Yeah, good. Yo, 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 Jerry. Yeah, man. Did you ever learn that Gangnam Style dance? Yeah. Really? Because I heard Sai himself actually rode in this elevator. Really? But his tux has got nothing on our onesies. Hey Tom. Yeah, Jerry. Going back to our pet dragon. Yeah. I was thinking, instead of Damon, we call it Bevel. I like it. Okay, so now we're going to actually have a look at some important things that we need to take into consideration when working with motion graphs. Okay, so there's some important key definitions that we need to know. So the first one being position, as shown by the letter X, describes where an object is or was. Now I'm going to use the graph that you could see that was taking place um, whilst I was in the elevator just over to the right here. Now it's important that we actually understand what this graph is doing because it's unlike any other graph we've seen before. So normally in the past we've looked at um, graphs where time has been on the bottom and we might have height as the y-axis. Okay, well this isn't actually the case for this graph. This graph is literally just showing the height and the times are actually written on here. So for example, there's actually really not any x-axis as such. Okay, so as you can see here, the um, elevator starts at 21 metres at 0 seconds and then it goes down for 16 seconds stopping at 14 metres. It stops then until 27 seconds have passed from the moment I started moving before going back down to 0 metres, that is touching the very bottom level. Now if I had shown that going down here like this, you wouldn't have actually been able to see what was going on if I had have gone up. So that's why it's just gone out and levelled out for a little bit. Okay, so you can see here essentially what position the elevator is in at any given time. All right, distance d is how far the object has actually travelled. So if we have a look here at the elevator example once again, to start off with we haven't moved anywhere because it's at zero seconds. Okay, After 16 seconds I've moved from 21 down to 14. So that means I've travelled a total distance of 7 metres for the first 16 seconds. Okay. After that point there, I've stopped for a little bit and I've gone down to zero. So my total distance that I've travelled 
is 21 meters because I've gone from a height of 21 meters all the way down to zero. Okay, coming to the point where I start going up to the top level, I travel 35 meters, so my total distance is 21 plus 35 being 56 meters. So distance essentially is just how far I've traveled at it all together. So displacement is the change in the object's position. Okay, if I have a look here, I start off at 21 meters. Up to the first 16 seconds, I go down to 14 meters. So you can see here that I've traveled a total distance of negative seven meters. That's my displacement because I've actually gone down. If we take a look at the first 97 seconds, so from zero to 97 seconds, what you can see is if I go across, I've traveled from 21 meters up to 35. So that there is a distance of 14 meters. Now, because I'm going up, it's positive. So I've got a displacement of positive 14. So note you can have negative values for displacement and you can have positive values for displacement, depending on which direction you're going. So the rule for displacement is displacement equals final position minus initial position. Looking at the graph once again, my final position being 14, all right, my initial being 21. So it would be 14 minus 21 gets me negative 7. So my displacement was negative 7 meters. And this is because I've actually gone down.